We begin with the ongoing investigation by the Durham Police Department into the events surrounding a teenager's death while in police custody last November. 17 year old Jesus Herta died from what police say was a self inflicted gunshot wound in the back seat of Officer Samuel Duncan's police car in the early morning hours of November 19th. Now the department is conducting its own investigation to find out how this happened and whether all procedures were followed. This is in addition to a separate investigation conducted by the State Bureau of Investigation. Department representatives held a media briefing on January 10th to release a synopsis of the internal investigation conducted by the Professional Standards Division as it stands at this point. The investigation shows that the Durham Emergency Communications Center received a call about a runaway teenager at approximately 2.10 a.m. on November 19th. The caller, Jesus Huerta's sister, advised the 911 dispatcher that her brother had attempted suicide in the past, but this information was not relayed in the CAD information sent to uniform patrol officers via their mobile computer terminals and the police cars. During the briefing, the director of Durham's Emergency Communications Center, James Sukup, explained why that information was not communicated to patrol officers. When that question was asked, it was pretty much perceived by the 911 communication officer as something that had happened in the past. That's why a clarifying question was followed up on, and that was, are there any physical or mental conditions that the officer needs to be aware of? And that was answered in the negative, no. So that was the reason that that was recorded on a narrative. When Officer Duncan and another officer found Hertha and another teen at Washington Street and Trinity Avenue, they discovered there was an outstanding arrest warrant for trespassing on Hertha. Officer Duncan took Mr. Huerta into custody for the misdemeanor warrant and handcuffed him behind his back. Officer Duncan conducted a cursory search or frisk of Mr. Huerta's pants and jacket pockets and placed him in the back of his patrol car. Officer Duncan's frisk did not reveal any contraband. Officer Duncan advised that he searched Mr. Huerta by using his hands to sweep both sides of Mr. Huerta's body, including his waist area. Sergeant Pearsall observed Officer Duncan frisk Mr. Huerta's clothing, but did not see him search further. Corporal Brown was also present when Huerta was handcuffed by Officer Duncan. Corporal Brown advised that he observed Officer Duncan pat down or frisk Mr. Huerta. Jaime Perez, who was with Mr. Huerta during this encounter, advised that the officers only patted their pockets and looked in their coats. As is standard procedure, Officer Duncan says he had already checked his patrol car at the beginning of his shift and did not find any contraband of any kind left in the car by the previous user. Herta was the first person to be placed in the back seat of the patrol car during Officer Duncan's shift. Officer Duncan advised that as he was driving to police headquarters, Mr. Huerta continued to move his cuffed hands so much that he had to tell Mr. Huerta several times to stop. Mr. Huerta responded by saying that he had a wedgie and was uncomfortable. Officer Duncan advised that he could also hear the sound of something rubbing against a hard plastic back seat area when Mr. Huerta was moving around, but he thought it was possibly the sound of the handcuffs rubbing against the seat. Officer Duncan advised that if he wasn't so close to headquarters, he would have pulled over to do a more extensive search of Mr. Huerta based on the arrestee's behavior in the back of the patrol car. Just after Officer Duncan pulled into the entrance at police headquarters, investigators say Herta fatally shot himself with a 45 caliber handgun in the back seat of the patrol car. The evidence and information collected thus far indicate that Mr. Huerta had a handgun concealed on his person. Officer Duncan did not discover the handgun during his search of Mr. Huerta. Mr. Huerta shot himself with that gun. All evidence indicates that Mr. Huerta died of a self-inflicted gunshot wound. As a result of Herta's death, the Police Department's Professional Standards Division is investigating possible violations of several policies. General Order 4067, in custody death. General Order 4003, transporting and handling of prisoners. And General Order 4064, R3, mobile video cameras. As part of a parallel and independent investigation, Durham County District Attorney Leon Standback announced on January 14th that no criminal charges will be filed regarding Herta's death.
In his statement, he said, after having received and reviewed the complete State Bureau of Investigation file, the Chief Medical Examiner's report, relevant North Carolina State Crime Laboratory reports, physical evidence, and forensic photographs, the Durham County District Attorney has found that there is not probable cause to charge a crime in Jesus Herta's death. Now that the District Attorney's Office has made its final determination and the SBI report is complete, City Manager Tom Bonfield is calling on the Police Department to complete its Internal Affairs report as quickly as possible. Bonfield also stated that he will continue to work with the City Council to determine what aspects of the report should be made public to maintain confidence and trust in the Police Department.